Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And this is Wednesday, the 29th of June, 2022. I'm sitting on a park bench in McDuffie Park, otherwise known as Hidden Park, because the park is completely surrounded by the backyards of houses with just walkways leading in and out of the park between the houses. I left the house this morning with my Royal Model O typewriter that I featured in yesterday's or the last video that you saw and this camera in my backpack here with the intention of going to a city park but I first had to drop by the shop of Mr. John Lewis because I wanted to drop off the Royal O and it needed a little bit of adjustments to some things. I walked out of John Lewis's repair shop instead with this which is a late 1960s Hermes 3000. And essentially, I made a direct exchange from the Model O to the Hermes 3000. I love the pre-World War II body style, the sleek look, the shiny black finish. It was in really immaculate condition. I like the tiny elite typeface, the crisp letters, but it had several problems. A couple type bars needed to be adjusted, but really more seriously was it has the classic royal escapement issues where occasionally you'll get skipping spaces, mainly between words, but sometimes between the letters of words, but also at the same time, if you type too fast, you get piling on of letters. And I knew that would take some fine tuning by Mr. Lewis, uh, but when I went back to the shop and brought it to him and explained the problems, I happened to mention in passing, you know, I was originally thinking about getting this Hermes 3000, but I got the Royal instead. And he goes, well, do you want to do a trade? And I looked at him and says, let me take that Hermes and sit it down on the table and test type on it again. And that's what I did. And it kind of did reconfirm my opinion that for me, I think the Hermes 3000 is the better machine. I do tend to write rather fast, type rather fast. I mean, I mean not the fastest, but I'm getting faster over the years. A person who wants to do some writing, I think the Hermes 3000 is maybe a better choice than the older pre-war machine. The caveat is, while this Hermes is a portable in the sense that it has a snap-on case and a handle, the uh, typewriter is big and quite a bit heavier than the Royal and the handle makes it a little uncomfortable to carry for very long distances. So it is technically portable. Suffice it to say that I just typed a page here of uh, random nonsense in the park here. And yeah, it's very, very satisfying and I feel much better about my purchase. Um, which, by the way, I actually didn't really spend my own money to buy this. I had been saving up money on this recognition debit card that I get from my employer. When you get a recognition of something you've done on your job, you get a little bit of money. And if you save those up, I had enough to you know, walk away with a free typewriter that has a 90-day warranty from Mr. Lewis. And... <laughs> thought that was pretty cool, you know? Well, so one obvious question would be that why didn't John Lewis catch the problems that the Royal O had before he sold it? And this is a question that my friend Kevin and I have actually pondered. And really what it amounts to is, first of all, John has been repairing typewriters for over 50 years. He's factory trained on some brands. He's almost 80 years old. He's had a lot of experience. He knows what he's doing. And when he works on a typewriter, he generally tears it down to the chassis, the bare chassis, sometimes taking all the type bars off. It looks like a naked frame sometimes with all the parts off of it. So he does a really thorough job. But I think like a lot of his typewriter technician brethren of his era, he doesn't actually do extensive writing on his machines. I mean, I think he does the quick brown fox and he does his little alignment checks that they're trained to do, you know, but I don't think he does extensive writing to find the more subtle issues that a person like me or my friend Kevin, who are more like ultra stickler hobbyists, who are probably like, we're, we're simultaneously good and bad for the typewriter business because on the one hand, we're the people oftentimes keeping the shops in business, but on the other hand, we're very persnickety 
which is a funny American word, we're very picky about things, more so than the average customer would have been years ago who just wants a typewriter for their business or something. Us typewriter hobbyists are picking the fly shit out of the pepper in a sense that we're so picky about the little minutia, the little details of everything working perfectly. So in the sense, I guess, we're a little bit more picky than the average typewriter technician would be. But on the other hand, I guess that's good. But, you know, if I was in John's shoes, I would simultaneously be thankful for people like me coming through the door, giving him business, but also I might cringe a little bit about this guy is so picky. He just wants this little thing fixed and that little thing fixed. So not to throw any shade at John Lewis. He's a wonderful technician and I would recommend him to anybody. Some of these problems are intermittent and you don't really notice them right away. You have to do extensive testing to find them. In the last month, I've acquired three typewriters and got rid of one. So the net change is two typewriters more in my collection. And so there's a little bit of changes going on here. I think that's fun. And then the funny part about it also is, you know, you might remember from a year and a half ago or so, you might remember me saying I'm downsizing my collection and Kevin and Ethan Moses are both asking, I thought you were downsizing your collection. <laughs> so. Oh, I am. I'm downsizing with a negative number. It's a negative of a negative number. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the new math. I'll do a review here soon of this Hermes 3000 and maybe a comparison because this is now the third Hermes 3000 that I own and all three of my Hermes are the different body styles. I have the older one, the curvy style. This is the intermediate boxy style. And then I have the later version that's the French made one. So I have all three. And as the old advertisement on TV used to say, collect the whole set. Well, that's what I've done. I've collected the whole set. This is Joe Van Cleve. Stay creative. Have a great day. Bye bye for now.